So a war on words, I was saying, couldn't make this stuff up. Well, you don't need to make it up when you're living in the craziest of times, right? But this headline here definitely caught my attention. I've only read the first part of this, and that's all I've really read of tonight's headlines that I've grabbed. Maybe some of them will be good, some of them might be bunk, some of them might be totally different than what I think they appear to be on the surface, but that's okay. We're going to do this together live. And the headline here reads, Are emojis ruining traditional communication? Smiley face. I'm only joking, folks. One linguist says, quote, Text speak can help us understand each other better. But another calls the idea plain daft and delusional. So before we get into this, let me give you my initial thoughts. I like the emojis. I do. I like the use of them. I think they're good to emphasize a text conversation where a, a lot of the conversation is lost due to the fact that communication, you know, it, there's more to it than just the stringing together of words and then sending them across the internet. Far more to it. Emotion, pitch, tone, all that kind of thing goes into a, a conversation when you're speaking to somebody face to face. So I do think the use of emojis can help to maybe emphasize or make a statement more clear, the feelings that you may be attaching to that statement. That That's one advantage. Personally, I think our language has been destroyed to the point where 20 years from now, it may be unrecognizable. But then again, 20 years from now, will we even be using written language? And I say that because 20 years from now, that'll be 19 years after the neural link comes out and all the other technologies that come onto the market that will enable us to link together in a hive mind configuration where thoughts and ideas and conversations can just be exchanged as ones and zeros. The firings of neurons translated and sent across the internet. What need do we have for writing language anymore, Kev? You know, it's redundant. Is that where we're heading? Well, let's see what the article says. I could be totally off the mark here. But it says it may be considered that the more you replace words with emojis, the worse your grammar and language skills become. I would agree with that. I also sometimes have a real problem, like deciphering, translating, text speak. You know, this way that people cut words down, and you've got lots of acronyms and things like that, R-O-F-L, M-A, L-M-F-A-O. See, it's hard to even keep up with them. L-O-L, well, that's an easy one. But we've all, I think, probably experienced a, a text at some point where we've looked at it and gone, what the hell is this person trying to tell me? So I don't think that's improving our language skills very much. And at a time when we are physically connecting less and less, that's got to be pretty dangerous, I feel. It says the culture of mobile communication, something that we were looking at last night, communications in general, it's been weaponized. We're, we're in an information war, folks. We truly are. Or quick fire back and forth emails, posts and texts inevitably compromises traditional writing and communication. But according to linguist Gretchen McCulloch, what a great name that is, the author of Because Internet, Understanding the New Rules of Language, text speak is humanity's most open source project. She says that emojis and memes can instantly relay your emotions. For instance, a grumpy cat will conv convey disdain in a more concise way. However, Chris McGovern, chairman of the Campaign for Real Education, doesn't share this view, saying the emojis dumb down language and nurture laziness. I think I'm agreeing more with Chris McGovern at this point. He goes on to say, Just as we find things on the internet by following links from one place to another, language spreads and disseminates through our conversations and interactions. Miss or Ms. McCulloch 
got to get that correct in this political correct day and age, right? I don't want to offend Ms. McCulloch. Says this type of language helps to enliven our social interactions and that the fluid fluidity of language is actually its biggest strength. I mean, fashion can change. Why can't language, she argues. I, I, I don't really think you can compare language to fashion, Ms. McCulloch. It's just my own personal kind of opinion there. She goes on to say, linguists are generally very positive about language evolution, and it's unfortunate that this message hasn't been conveyed to broader society as much because we're still dealing with a history of people worshipping Latin, she told Vox. It's really interesting to look at how different people or different ages and eras are using language on the internet. And she says there's a misconception that if people are using language differently, then it must be wrong. Well, if they're not using concise English, if they're speaking or writing English, then I hate to point this out, but it's wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, but it just is. And it says here, there's not one right way of using a language online. We can use language differently, and it can actually help us understand each other. But not everyone shares this view. Chris McGovern, also a former government advisor, told the Mail Online that those who welcome emojis as a beneficial evolution of language are naive, delusional, and plain daft. I think you'll probably find the people making a case for this more than anyone else, and it's no criticism, but not everyone's good at spelling, not everyone's good at grammar, and maybe this is a, a real plus to them, you, you know? And again, that's no criticism, but I can't see why somebody would think this is actually a good way forward. The language needs to evolve. I think language has done us pretty well up until now. Wouldn't you agree? They do not seem to understand that extinction is part of evolution too. That is the direction in which mastery of good written English is heading and the increasing addiction to and reliance on picture language in the form of emojis is accelerating the decline. Emojis dumb down language and nurture laziness. According to the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, grandparents in Britain outperform their grandchildren in basic skills, including literacy. Around a third of 11-year-olds have just failed to reach the so-called floor standards in their SATs, he said. Employers are forever complaining that at least 20% of school leavers are illiterate and therefore unemployable. And I'll add to that, and therefore probably about to become dependent on the state, right? We know they all want us sucking off the government teat. We've said that for how long now? So the lowering in schooling standards, education, along with this ripping up and bastardization of the English language. All of that comes together with that dumbing down effect, right? And we know, we know they want a population that's dumbed down because then it's harder for us to think for ourselves, to identify the problem, and we're far easier to control. It says here, he said, I'm not killjoy or, and of course, emojis can be fun but they should come with a literacy health warning. So that there, folks, and everyone's going to have their own personal opinion of this. Do I use emojis? Of course I do. But I do think, bigger picture, that it's not good for our communication, for the future of the English language. And I'm sure that it goes with every other language as well out there. I speak about the English language because I speak English, I speak a tiny little bit of French. I really do wish I could speak more languages. I often find it quite embarrassing, especially over here in Europe, that so many people are bilingual, trilingual, and a lot of the time you'll find people from outside of the UK can speak English a lot better than people in the UK and from the UK can. Go figure. So yeah, that's the first story I came across today. And this next one here, 
kind of ties in with it because we're literally destroying the language right now and banning words in the name of being politically correct and so that these awful words that have been around for hundreds and thousands of years don't offend people anymore. Not that they ever offended people in the first place. Well, there was that few that got offended when the media told them to and would virtue and have their fake outrage, right? But that doesn't make it real. And tell me, tell me, have any of you out there really been offended by the word man? D does that word offend you? Do you really start to get a bit, oh, feel a bit awkward when you hear words like manufacture, manifest, Manchester in England? Does that man part really get on your nerves? I didn't think so. I've never met anyone that gets a bit anti at the word man either. Yet if you were to look at some of the stories doing the rounds right now, you would think this was the most evil word and responsible for for mass genocide everywhere. Just the word itself, man. And it says here, city bans word man to become gender neutral. And of course, you guessed it, it has to be California, right? I'm only joking. Well, it is California, but I didn't mean to make fun of our Californian listeners out there. It says a Californian city has voted to rename its manholes maintenance holes in a bid to become gender neutral and so they can virtue signal to all of those people that will pander to this kind of nonsense. Berkeley's municipal code and official paperwork will now also refer to manpower as human effort or use the term workforce. So let me ask you again, has that word manpower ever really made you pissed off? Have you ever heard anyone using that? Maybe mankind as well. Can we get? Do we, do we have to get rid of mankind? Is that another one? Is it? Is it person kind? Human kind? The measure to get rid of gender-specific terms was adopted after a unanimous vote on Tuesday night. Council member Rigel Robinson, oh, what a name, who proposed the measure, said there is power in language. This is a small move, but it matters. His successful proposal explained. Of course it was successful. Who in their right mind would actually have the kahunas to use some common sense and say, this is ludicrous, mate. This is a stupid idea. Who who you honestly think you're helping with this? You know? But, of course, in this current climate, to question such things would be enough to probably land you in jail. And a good friend, Jonathan, listens to the show. He's like, by all means, make fun of California. This place is ran by idiots and overrun by clowns. And Jonathan, you were one of many people I had in my mind there when I did poke a little bit of fun at California. So thank you. I feel a lot better now. And I know, I'd say most people know what my sense of humor is like by now. You know, oh, I hope so anyway. Because if not, you're really not going to get me. It says here, his successful proposal explained amending the municipal code to include gender-neutral pronouns by eliminating any gender preference language within the municipal code will promote equality. Really? Really? It'll promote equality? So changing manholes to, to like, uh, what was the term they were actually using for it there? Ah, maintenance holes. Is that going to bring about equality? Is that going to mean that the bosses at the local municipal or whatever are all of a sudden going to start hiring equal amounts of men and women and the whole world's going to sing Kumbaya and we'll all live happily ever after? We can all sing and dance around a, a, a maintenance hole, right? Yeah, right, sure thing. The world has gone absolutely crazy and you can bet this guy, Rigel Robinson, or in fact, there I go again, assuming it's a guy, who knows what a Rigel is? He, she, it, they. I don't even know how many pronouns there are anymore, folks. It's getting too confusing for me in here. But I'll be back after the break with more words that are getting banned. And these words, why they're banned, nobody knows. Nobody knows. 